ladies and gentlemen, we got him. What's poppin' y'all? It's your man Clock Boy Bales with a fresh new look. <laughs> but let's be real here. Um I think that last night may have been something that I don't that has made that I think a Wisconsin football fan has been waiting for for years. Um, we finally have a quarterback that is actually good. Um, uh, he was everything. Graham Mertz was everything a Badger fan could have hoped for. Or not just a Badger fan. An entire Wisconsin sports fan. I mean, for years, we've had to suffer through quarterbacks that just sit in the pocket and make throws. And then they'll get sacked. Graham Mertz is the guy we've been hoping for. I just... I am like... I was speechless last night. Speechless on how he played. And regardless, I'm not impressed with our team at all. But Graham Mertz makes a team excellent. He just was everything. Now everyone's talking about like, yeah, Jack Cohn's job is like done. He's the backup for sure. Um, Graham Mertz has completely won the starting job. We all knew this was what was going to happen. Everyone thought that this is what was going to happen last year. And then Cone ended up being good, and it was a great quarterback system for JT. Now JT's gone, and now Quintez Cephas is gone. I'll say this. If, imagine if we had JT and Quintez Cephas still. Imagine. We'd actually be as good as Alabama. We'd be good as Clemson. We'd be one of the we'd be the best team in the nation. I cannot believe we let this guy ride on the bench last year and be forced to redshirt him. Why? It just makes no sense to me. It's just, I just don't get it. This guy is the total package. And I'm just I'm just blown away. I'm absolutely happy that, like, I mean, after Russell Wilson left, we've had quarterbacks that just sit in the pocket, throw picks, get sacked, you know the rest, because they're cement feet. You've seen Stave and Hornibrook and a bunch of these other guys that we've had in. They just, they're not star. they were not stars, they're just system quarterbacks because we're running the football. Illinois, their game plan was to stop the run. We had three running backs that were used in today's game. Um, Nikhil Watson, Isaac Garendo, and Garrett Groshek. Groshek had the most yards out of all of them. Personally, I think the running backs just did not do good because obviously they're def obviously um let's as we know um Levy Smith's defense actually is pretty good. I mean they last last year they forced three turnovers against us. That's why they beat us last time. A lot of people forget how good their defense is despite how bad their offense is. You know, their offense, you know, they're almost I Illinois offense was literally the same as last year's. They only lost their starting running back from last year. That's the same offense. But what happened? Graham Mertz happened. We creamed him, boy. We creamed him. Let me just tell you, um, Graham Mertz did some things that a Badger quarterback has not done for years. Um, I obviously can't remember all the records he's broken, um, but he's definitely did um, 
he definitely did unbel he he did the unthinkable right now. He broke the Badgers completion record that was recently held by um I don't know, but I remember Hornibrook almost broke it two years ago or something like that. Against PIU. Hornibrook went twenty out of twenty one. His only pass was a dropped pass. 248 yards, five touchdowns, also tying a record. He tied two records, actually. 17 straight completions, tied that with, uh, he tied that record with uh, Tanner McAvoy, who actually, I didn't know that Tanner McAvoy actually had that record. And five touchdowns in a game. That's actually a record that um, was held by Daryl Bevel, I think, back in fifth. I don't know. Obviously, everyone knows that. But I don't know what to say. He, he just was amazing. I mean, I, I, I can't believe, like, he's getting shout-outs from Patrick Mahomes, J.J. Watt, stars in the league. I mean, for a Wisconsin quarterback, you, 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 you thought you'd never see that. You'd think for a running back, you'd see that. But for a quarterback, we've never seen a quarterback that good in our lives. Yes, I know this was against Illinois. But, yeah, an Illinois team that had, that was like fourth in the league in takeaways. A lot of people don't forget about that. But regardless, um, in his Wisconsin career so far, he's only had two incompletions. <laughs> I, I think a lot of people have forgotten that. And then that one game he played last year, he went nine out of ten. He only had he's only had two incompletions so far in his Wisconsin career. Um, I don't even know what to say. Um, I'm, I'm astounded. And a lot of people, you know, Graham Mertz's great performance, it doesn't take back. I mean, a lot of people are not realizing how good the defense played. The only score that Illinois had was a fumble returned for a touchdown after Jake Ferguson had a fumble. And I'll get on him in a minute. Um, Jake Ferguson had a fumble. Illinois returned that for a touchdown because no one actually touched the ball and it was sliding everywhere. Only turnover by Wisconsin. Um, yeah, that's that. Um, yeah, let's talk about the receivers. Um, so far, Jake Ferguson probably had the best game of his career. Uh, everyone was expecting him to have a great season. Um, but let me tell you, um, he had... He had a just... A, he had just an outstanding game. He was getting targets left and right. Yeah, I mean, he's... Just like Troy Fumagalli had um, his junior year, that really big jump in his junior year, obviously the same thing's probably going to happen to Ferguson already. Um, Ferguson, obviously, actually I think tied a record for touchdowns for a tight end, I think. Um, also, I think a lot of people don't have forgotten that, but um, Jake Ferguson had seven catches, 72 yards, and three touchdowns. Uh, outstanding day. Um Two touchdowns, also um, Danny Davis, two touch, two uh, catches for 72 yards and a touchdown. Kendrick Pryor, the other receiver, had three catches for 44 yards. Garrett Groshek, four for 29. Jack Dunn, three for 21. And Mason Stocky, one for 10 yards and a TD. On the ground, the only rushing touchdown went to John Chanel, obviously our fullback. Our running game, uh, Garrett Groshek led the way, 13 carries for 70 yards. Nakia Watson, 19 carries for 62 yards, and Isaac Garendo, 11 yard, 11 carries for 36 yards. Of course, those are our three running backs. Obviously, our running game just did not look the greatest. I wasn't really expecting that, but obviously everyone knows about how Wisconsin is with the run. But honestly, because of how good our passing attack was, teams are going to look at that, and they're going to say, oh, we really need to defend the air because they know how good Grant Mertz is. High school, he had 50 touchdowns. Don't forget about that. 51 touchdowns. High school, that's fantastic. 
In a senior year. I'm talking about in a senior year. I'm talking, I'm saying. Um, a five touchdown night to open up your career. Four in the first half, keep in mind. Um, that's just outstanding. And a lot of it was because of the play action pass. Everyone was getting, everyone was assuming we were going to run the ball, run the ball, do the same thing we did with Jonathan Taylor, but we were passing the ball. Play actions on third down because for ye for years we've struggled with the third and long. We can never get a completion on the third and long. This guy could do it. And it wasn't even the long passes. It was short passes. We did a lot of screen passes to Groshek and Dunn. We did a lot of that. And I was really doing a that was a really great job. Um and I'm really proud at how they did, um, which was great. Um, all right, going to Illinois, um, Brandon Peters was the starter. Um, a lot of people forgot about him. He was started at Michigan and then transferred to Illinois after uh, Shea Patterson showed up. Isaiah Williams, their other quarterback, their freshman guy, also got a lot of playing time. I feel like Levy Smith is doing a lot of the same stuff where they – switch a lot of quarterbacks just try to change the game uh, that didn't really work Peters went 8 on 19 for 87 yards um, obviously that didn't obviously do much uh, Grim Mertz's quarterback rating was 95.8 I mean I'd say that's pretty good um, Peters had 7 carries for 75 yards on the ground which was actually leading rushing for some reason last year the same thing happened where we could not stop the quarterback run in the Rose Bowl I guess the same things basically happened this time around. Epstein had eight carries for 36 yards, and Brown had three for 12. Those were obviously the running backs. Um, only uh, two turnovers. We had a uh, Isaiah Loudermilk had a fumble, and one of our interceptions went to one of our young guys. Um, uh, I forgot a uh, Toller. I don't know. I didn't know who he was, but I had to look that one up because it was kind of. It was right at the end of the game. Um, I mean, it wasn't like in the last second when we had our guys not doing their much. Um, but yeah, um, I'm excited. Um, another thing, obviously, I'm gonna give a little feedback on what I want to see next week. Um, play Jalen Berger. Um, I wanted to see him play tonight, um, but I felt like. They wanted to stick with the three guys they got. Um, usually the freshmen. Obviously this guy had really great highlights if you ever want to check him out, Jalen Berger. Also Julius Davis, another guy. Don't forget about him. Um, I want to see them play those freshmen. Um, I wasn't really impressed with Nakia Watson. I mean, he's did the same thing. He's not like Jonathan Taylor who has vision. He's just a straightforward power runner. Groshek has vision, but he's not really fast and he's not a star. And Garendo has speed, but... It's not really guaranteed to be a star. I feel like that he was great in the Jet Sweep game. I feel like they could use him there. Um, I want them to use Jalen Berger. I just want to see how he is and how he does. They obviously gave the chance with Jonathan Taylor last. When Jonathan Taylor was a freshman, they obviously gave him the chance because of Taiwan Deal's injury, um, and that's what happens. Um, I'm. Uh, you gotta. You gotta really trust your guys. You just can't not trust your guys. <laughs> Um, yeah, basically. Um, yeah, so anyways, we play Nebraska next week. They got decimated by Ohio State today. Um, uh, obviously, they're having quarterback issues of their own. Uh, Adrian Martinez was benched for Luke McCaffrey. Another McCaffrey? Uh, a lot of people forget that Christian McCaffrey's not the only McCaffrey. There's a... Uh, Brother, brother that's a wide receiver and a younger brother that's a quarterback at Michigan and another younger brother that's a quarterback at Nebraska. So they got a big-ass family. Um, regardless, um, I don't know what their situation is going to be, but they have, they obviously it was tied 14-14 at one point, but in the second half, uh, Ohio State just kind of took over as normal because it's Ohio State. But obviously, you know, nighttime game against Nebraska – I think it's a home game. I don't know, but I feel like we should win this one uh, after the way we played. Obviously, we did also find out that two of their defensive starters, even though their defense played terrible, I'm not going to lie, um, <laughs> went, are out in the entire first half. Obviously, a new rule states that um, 
when you're ejected, you cannot play in the first half of the next game, which I didn't know, which is an interesting rule. Um, hopefully that minimizes targeting <laughs> in the league, if that was the case. Um, but I'm excited. I'm absolutely excited. Um, Obviously, Nebraska, you know, Nebraska's an up-in-the-air team. You never know what they're going to do. They're, they're going to be a great team, or are they going to just be a stinker? Obviously, Ohio State made them look bad, but, you know, it's Ohio State. I, I believe our defense played really great. Um, obviously, I really want to see them do more. Um, they, did, they did some real good things. I want to see them really get to the quarterback more. Obviously, obviously, both these two quarterbacks are pretty fast. I don't know whoever they start, um, but that's that. But yeah, I, I, they should win this next game after how great, how they decimated Illinois. Um, but yeah, um, this is gonna be it's gonna be exciting on how they do, and uh, go Badgers. That's really all I gotta say. I mean, I can't. I spent the first ten minutes of my video talking about Graham Mertz. I had to stick to everything else. But I'm excited for Graham Mertz. I'm excited for the Badgers. I don't know what to expect. But this should be an exciting next seven games. I really am going to be excited. Um, anyways, it's Graham Mertz season. And Packers play tomorrow against Houston. Hopefully they make more Scots and happy as they don't lose again. But we'll see what happens. Um, anyways, also World Series game four on tonight. I'm picking Tampa to even the series. And... We'll see what happens next. So, it's your man, Club Boy Bales, signing off. We will see you next time. Sorry that the video was a little bit too long, but I had a lot to get to. Anyways, uh, take care and be safe.